there are many benefits to expect from subcutaneous infu- uh, uh, injection of, of natalizumab. Um, from the patient side, uh, as I said, it, it is uh, increased flexibility, not having to go to infusion centers. For the hospitals itself, um, of course, having infusion centers is a costly uh, uh, effort. You have to have nurses available, time uh, and infusions. And sometimes also these infusions are not easy if you don't have an easy accessible vein, if you're if you have difficulty of getting a, a, a good uh, IV infusion every month, then this can be a real hazard. Uh, so this is really uh, from both sides uh, a win-win situation, let's say. Also for governments that need to cover for costs of, of uh, daily infusions, day in, uh, infusion centers, for example, this also will be an improvement. So. Uh, many benefits and exactly no real downsides because yeah it's it's the same as the drug that we know from many years so so that's just uh, the good side of it for switching from from iv to subcutaneous uh, uh, infusion uh, or injection of natalizumab uh, it is quite easy you just switch uh, at the next time when the infusion should take place, you go to a subcutaneous uh, part. You don't have to do anything special there. Uh, so um, there will be also some uh, more data available in the next m- months. I think by the end uh, of this year, by next conference, like Extremes, for example, we hope to have the data from the NOVA study, which also looks at IV versus subcutaneous, but also extended interval dosing every six weeks, whether that is also for subcutaneously the same, which we all expect, of course, but it's still uh, something you want to show in a, in a trial. So exactly, you, you just can inter-switch intravenous versus subcutaneous. And, and I think that most neurologists uh, treating patients with MS will have some experience with natalizumab from, from the past. So in this, it's just, uh, yeah, inter-switchable, let's say. It's, it's very easy.